Hello everyone and welcome back to another reaction video. Today we are reacting to Game Theory. I'm so hungry. <laughs> this is, uh, if I understand correctly, the sequel to Cooking Companions uh, Game Theory. So I guess this is Cooking Companion Game Theory Part 2. A lot of you wanted to see this one, so here I am with uh, the second one. And by the time I'm done with this, uh, if you've seen my gotcha channel, then well, I'm hopefully by the time this is posted, part. The last part will be up. Who knows? Anyway. Yeah, this one got many requests. Uh, though I have to say, it's a bit disturbing and uncomfortable to men talk about this. bit dark and all that but yeah but we're here to solve well to hear the rest oh my gosh I accidentally clicked that my bad okay <laughs> Anyway, the link to this video will be down in the description below. If you have any recommendation videos, then leave it down in the comment section down below. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe button to support the channel, support all the video content, and so on and so forth. And finally, be sure to hit the notification button to be notified immediately when a new video comes out. New videos are coming out soon, and they're all going to be to your liking. So might as well press that. And all this is free, so might as well press... This. All the other plans. Now with this all said, let's get right into it. All the rest, they're still afraid to enter this room, too traumatized to come to grips with it. Why do you um. think Cabbage wanted you to play so many games with her? She wanted you to remember what happened here, and now you're talking to a potato, and obviously you're not remembering anything. Goodbye for now. And you see, that's what happens when you talk to a potato instead of me. Here, you may not remember, but I certainly do. So let me fill in. Uh. Okay, that just stunned me for a second. Is that actually dialogue in the game? Yeah, I don't know if that's actually dialogue in the game. How should I know? I never played the game. <sighs> oh well. Those blanks. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that would never think of eating its friends because it doesn't have any. But hey, you could become a friend of the oh. channel by hitting the subscribe button. Don't worry, you're not within stabbing distance or anything, so everyone wins. Last time, we began to dissect the tasty lore hidden inside of Cooking Companions. Could they not use meat? This is already making me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> A game that begins as your classic dating sim visual novel and ends with an anime knife fight set in the basement while an audience of sentient vegetables root you on. Also, cannibalism. A lot of cannibalism. And although that was already plenty, there's even more going on beneath the surface. Last time we discovered that our four companions were actually refugees escaping from Ukraine during the horrible famine known as Holodomor. We also figured out that we play as the old hag Baba Yaga, a character from Slavic folklore who asks you one question and then eats you when you answer wrong. Spoiler alert, these guys answered wrong. But even- Is there even a right answer? Because it sounds literally 
like a no win no Way and situation. that doesn't appear to be the whole story. Although we appear to be the Baba Yaga, it seems like there might have been more Baba Yagas before us. There's one key line from our talking vegetable friends that makes it seem like if we lose, our cannibalism companion Karen will take our place. Chompettes, we can't allow Karen to take over the cabin. Plus, inside the cabin are hidden notes that date back hundreds of years to the late 1700s, leading me to believe that maybe we haven't actually been here forever as the Baba Yaga, but instead are possessed by the spirit of her. A spirit that that has passed from person to person over the decades. That at least was my theory. MY INITIAL THEORY! But could I prove it? What actually drew us into this cabin? What is our backstory? Well, to explain all of that and to truly understand what's going on inside of this game beyond just the Feast of Flesh, we have to talk about the Chompettes. They are literally adorable yet frightening at the same time. So, let me guess, uh, the old Baba Yagas were these vegetables. Am I right? I don't know. Guess we're gonna have to see more. These guys are all over the artwork for this game, and you can see why. The kawaii little edibles lighten up what would otherwise be a completely grim horror story of starvation inside of a stranded cabin. In total, we have ourselves five... Okay, one, with that picture, you might as well make it a zombie game. Two... Yeah, they kind of lighten up the mood. Despite, personally... <laughs> making it even more disturbing. Key members of the Chompettes, Cabbage, leader of the group who likes to organize games for the others to play, Onion the Comedian, though not sure calling us stinky over and over again is actually that funny, Bread, the lover of puns, the vaguely threatening Raspberry, and the grumpy non-participatory Potato. There's also frequent references to a missing sixth Chompette, Cornbread, but he's not around anymore. Throughout the game, these guys pop in to make jokes, unlock new recipes, and generally comment on your declining mental stability. So, are they real, or are they just figments of your imagination? Even the player character asks this question the first time we encounter them in the game, and the answer is unclear at best. No one else seems to see them, and when we begin to pass out towards the end of the game, the characters seem to phase in and out of existence. Feels pretty obvious that we're just going mad, right? Then again, they can also keep drawers shut, slam doors, and have even made mouse holes to travel unseen throughout the cabin. Plus, we're told Potato blocks those same mouse holes with rocks in New Game Plus, so they're not only able to move rocks, but also apparently can't pass through them. Well, the answer to what they really are seems to come at the end of that new game plus. After killing an enraged Karen down in the basement, we actually get a little cutscene that shows her lying on the ground, eyes widening as she dies, only for it to then cut to the Chompettes welcoming in a new vegetable turn up to the group. Though this new Chompette is labeled as a he, the editing makes it very clear that it's meant to be Karen. But then why would she, of all the people, become a Chompette as opposed to everyone else that we've seen die throughout the game? Mariah, Gregor, and Anatoly all die in the game, but they only haunt the cabinet spirits. They don't form some new food group meant to chase us around, so what's going on here? Well, several times throughout the game, huh. both the spirits of our dead companions and the Chompettes make mention that, quote, those who die in the cabin are bound by different rules. The rules are different for people that die in the cabin. The lucky ones are dead when cooked. The important word here is in the cabin. Earlier in the game, Mariah and Anatoly both leave the cabin in search of food. These moments are emphasized by a little jingle and the explicit words character has left the cabin pretty hard to deny what's going on in those moments as for gregor our third companion well yes he does die inside the cabin it isn't by our hand he's been cut to pieces by karen mariah gregor and anatoly are haunting the cabin because of our guilt but karen died inside the cabin's basement from stab wounds we inflict which is why she then becomes a chompette this in turn suggests that all the other chompettes must function the same way previous victims of the bobby Yaga also Okay, so that means Because of Baba Yaga killing people turns them into a part of the group. That means that those three 
didn't die because of us. They died because of Karen, who lost her mental stability and killed them and made them food. Sorry, I need a second. Okay, so that means Karen was going through the, I guess, uh, process of becoming the new Baba Yaga, if I'm understanding this correctly. And her last goal was to kill us, the player character, to become the next Yamba. <sighs> so, that means after this, she'll be filled with guilt and want everyone away, I guess. Murder no, no. within the confines of the cabin. During the hide and seek section of the story, we find Onion in the bedroom and he tells us this. I'm sorry to hear about Mariah, Anatoly, and Gregor, but yikes, that's three people gone in less than a month. Not as bad as five people in one night, though, right? Five deaths, five chompettes. Hmm, pieces seem like they're falling into place. We even get this line from Onion during the fight with Karen in the basement. Just finish this in one swift motion, like with Potato. We killed Potato in one move, something that Potato confirms during his ending. Looting it from my corpse and hiding it in a drawer murder or i could be wrong i guess this person killed the la the old yaba and well they killed the old yaba first and then just killed the rest while they were the new Yaba. And because the new Yaba makes people do them, that means... Eh, I'm not gonna go into it until I get more in information. Theft, in one day. Wait, wait, what? Huh. Wait, what? His knife? So far, we've seen Cabbage refer to it as our knife, and we only ever asked Karen to give us back our knife, but it was originally Potatoes? This is where things really start to get interesting. I mentioned last time how Potato really is the oddball of the group. While all the rest are willing to play along with Cabbage's games, Potato regularly stays silent, or else kills the moment with an offhanded comment, bringing everyone crashing back down to reality. In one of the game's many endings, he says that you should both leave the cabin to feast on all the people people of local towns together. He also is the one that gives us the slaughter stew recipe, the only outright cannibalistic recipe in the game. On top of all of it, during one of his survival lessons is an in-depth analysis of the Harris-Benedict equation, which calculates how people starve to death. You know, a totally normal, not serial killery thing to do at all. And if none of that was explicit enough, Potato even says, I wouldn't miss a killing for the world. This was his cabin. Potato was the Baba Yaga before us. Remember those notes that I've been mentioning from around the cabin, the ones that you can only get on certain days in certain places after multiple clicks? Well, the last note we get tells us this. June 26, 1862. Another body of a child was discovered within the city of Zakopane, with the remains stuffed into a barrel full of potatoes. This marks the fourth victim by the butcher of Zakopane in less than a month. Potatoes, you say? Hmm? That's not the only connection to our good friend Potato, either. During the Chompette cooking courses, another post-game mode made available after you get your first end, while the others are reminiscing about school, Potato tells us that he dropped out of grade school so he could work at the butcher. To which Bread replies, Explains everything so far. Potato was the butcher of Zakopane. As Onion says, I wouldn't call it a change of heart, because he never really had one, Potato. And we know we can't be the butcher. Based on another of the hidden notes inside of the game, we know the butcher was, at one point, summoned to court. But as Potato himself says, It's a shame you never went to trial for anything. But then, who are we? How did we get involved in all this? Well, we were part of the original group of kids that become the Chompettes. During the final fight, Bread asks us a very interesting question during our fight with Karen. Why did we come here again? So that explains Potato. Notice the use of the word we. We were a part of the group with Bread at some point. Potato, meanwhile, was an outsider. In the appetizer preview edition of this game, you and Potato have a heart-to-heart, -heart, and he outright tells us this. I cornered the four in this basement room 
and all of us ended up dead. Cabbage, onion, raspberry, bread. They're still afraid to enter this room, too traumatized to come to grips with it. Potato, as the butcher, was about uh. to kill everyone. And you see, that's when you step in. In the main game, we have an opportunity to tell Karen about the Chompettes. And when we do, this is her response. A potato is killing people? They asked you to save them? What the heck does that even mean? In short, we killed the butcher of Zakopane with his own knife as he was killing our friends. And in so doing, we got possessed and became the Baba Yaga. But how? For some reason, we weren't gathered into the basement like the others. We had the chance to kill the butcher when all the rest of our friends were helpless. So what made us so different? Well, I suspect that the butcher was training us to become like him. Throughout the game, we act as Karen's mentor, introducing her to the world of killing and cannibalism. We show her books about chopping people up and we get lines like she's not ready yet. She is meant to become our cooking companion, at least until she gets a little bit too enthusiastic and turns on us. And I suspect that the butcher was training us up in a similar way. In our various conversations with Potato, there seems to be some level of friendship between our character and the killer. He asks us to go into the basement and put an end to this, not for the chompettes. From me. We also get hints throughout New Game Plus's timeline that Karen and Potato would have made great partners in another life. Out of all of the kids that he planned to kill, we were singled out as special. We were meant to be his pupil. As you might imagine, being a one-man cannibal is a lonely life. Getting to share that with someone else, though? Priceless. But when our friends started getting killed, we had to act and slaughter the man who had taken us under his wing. Except what we didn't know is that that would force us to go on and continue the Baba Yaga's legacy moving forward. So, there you have it. The deep lore of cooking companions. Except there's one final layer to the story. One final chompette that we need to discuss. Cornbread. As I mentioned before, cornbread is the missing sixth huh. chompette. One that we hear mentioned a lot, but never really see until the game's final, most secret ending. We know from in-game clues that cornbread's real name was Raziel and that they were related to Onion. Being a chompette, we also know that presumably they were killed in the cabin and that we consumed their body. But there's something that makes cornbread different. Unlike all the other chompettes, we've let cornbread bread move on. During the end game of New Game Plus, Cabbage asks us if we'll let the Chompettes go, and we say no. Will you let us go? Someday, maybe. And yet for some reason, we've allowed Cornbread to pass on. Why? Well, we know at some point that we've actually stopped killing. During the post-game, Potato asks us this. How many generations died brutally at your hands before you gave up? Was it your arthritis that stopped you? <laughs> or did you eventually feel remorse? I think it was the latter. I think that we felt remorse. And it was Cornbread that did it to us. Now, to be honest, based on this message that I found on Discord, I'm not even sure the creators of the game have fully mapped this out. But based on everything that I've seen inside of the game and everything that we covered so far, here's what I think happened. After the night where our friends die and we kill the butcher, we become possessed by the Baba Yaga. Some time passes. We're still in the cabin, alone and hungry. But then, a new child stumbles in. Someone we know. It's Onion's relative, Raziel, looking for his lost family member. We bring them in and they stay for a while, telling us countless puns, just generally being fun and bringing joy to our otherwise lonely life. Raziel gives us hope, shows us that there's no need for us to kill, that we can become normal again, but eventually the hunger sets in. It can't be quelled. It can't be stopped. We resist it, but at some point we succumb to the Baba Yaga's need. We kill Raziel in a moment of weakness. He wasn't meant to be there. He wasn't meant to die. We just couldn't help ourselves. Out of regret and out of self-loathing, we eat him. We eat every last piece of him. And then we let him go because he was innocent. Because he reminds us of our weakness. Because we can't bear to keep him a prisoner. We let him move on and we keep all the other chompettes here with us to afraid to be left alone. We keep the rest of the chompettes here because they don't come with the extra burden of guilt. And so there you have- uh Oh, the developer just tagged us in a tweet. I wonder what this is about. <laughs> a black image? You know what that means. Crank up the exposure, boys. A shadowy figure holding a knife with four people. Cabbage, raspberry, onion, bread, and the shadow of potato. Beautiful. Chef's kiss. Now all we need is that cornbread huh. origin story and we're all good. And with that, my friends, we put a wrap Wow, the that's, delicious uh... lore of cooking companions. So huh. remember, the next time you're at the store and the vegetables start talking to you, don't just tune them out. Give a listen. You might just have made your new best friend and eventually a salad. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Oh boy. Thanks for watching. Huh. Well, that was interesting.
I actually don't know what to say. So, I guess my idea is kind of right. But also kind of wrong. I guess... They became this way because they couldn't let go of them. The cornbread was free because of remorse of everything that happened. This kind of explains everything. Of course, I'm kind of curious of Cornbread. Sounds like an interesting character. A nice one to be, in fact. Anyway, though... It actually... is a hilarious thing. The person is meant to kill people for they have a they have a baga's hunger and all that yet they suffer alone and yet the best way to beat it and all that is to be alone quite hilarious in a completely dark way But it kind of makes you curious. Does that mean the that the Yamba is preventing you from offing yourself? I mean, it would make sense. Or maybe it just drove the person insane enough to the point that they couldn't just go around and offing themselves every five seconds. Messed up thing, to be honest. But yeah. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. Uh, once again, this video, will, the link to this video will be down in the description below. Leave a comment about what kind of video you want me to react to next. Um, be sure to hit the notification button, because the Saturday's video will be <laughs> an interesting one. And if you don't want to miss that, you gotta make sure you hit that notification button. Also, while you're at it, be sure to hit the subscribe button to support the channel, support these types of videos, support the content provided by the channel, and so on and so forth. This is all free, so you might as well hit that button. Now, with this all said, I hope you all enjoy, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!